Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's talk about a subject that's a little argumentative. And I, when I say a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. There are folks that are going to tell you that your combs will not last very long. And if you do let them last a long time, it's going to kill your bees. Hogwash. I've got a bunch of information that I believe is going to help explain why I've used combs for over 16 years at a time. And I've got combs that are a little older than that because 16 years ago, I purchased my first hives from a fella. Shoot, those combs might have been 8, 10 years old when I got the things on. Some of them are nasty looking, but the queens still lay them up. Now, I've cycled a lot of those out. But let's talk about a little bit of history, chemicals, miticides, and how it can affect your combs. And kind of, I think, give you a broad picture on why I think combs should be allowed to be used much, much longer. All right, so prior to Lorenzo Langstroth, who is considered the father of modern beekeeping, you had beehives and gums, logs basically, or you had boxes, and you had swarms that you would put in them, and they would just build combs haphazardly throughout the box. You couldn't hardly get into them without really damaging the bees. You couldn't hardly get any honey off of them. You definitely couldn't select and breed for bees at that time. So when the removable frame became available to the masses, it totally changed beekeeping. Bee space, removable combs, it is amazing. These combs are cold. Anyone who tells you differently does not keep a whole lot of bees for very long. All right. My opinions are like noses, and that's mine right there. All right, so as far as history, let's go a little bit closer to our current time, and that's uh, in the 80s when the varroa mites really started making an impact, not only in this country, but other places as well. And that changed so many things. See, prior to the varroa mites coming over, beekeepers, commercials especially, and a lot of hobbyists who weren't at that time told to replace their combs every couple of years, were keeping their combs for decades. Some were bragging as many as 40 years. And if you look through a lot of beekeeping literature, it's very common to see combs you'd use for multiple decades. Now, when the varroa mites came over, they devastated the bees. Bees were just dying left and right. You think bees have been dying lately? You should have seen it when the mites first came over. They Beekeepers didn't have anything for them. So miticides were created, and many of those old miticides, like check mite, apistan, some of these are still being sold, by the way. Don't buy those products. They don't even work on mites, and they do build up huge residues into combs. Those things would absorb into the wax, and over time, they would build up. And if you use multiple ones, could even make them even more aggressive and damaging the bee's health. However, we live, thankfully, in a different time. We have a lot of natural chemicals that do not build up in the combs. But when the mites came over, we started using those miticides, and at that point, that is when the trend of recycling combs often became popular. However, if you're not using those harsh chemicals, why should you, and why would you? I'm going to explain later just all the things that you can use these combs for. So, we have oxalic acid. We have formic acid, thymol. While some of those might sound a little hard, they're actually very gentle on the bees when used correctly, and they don't build up in the combs, most importantly. Even the chemical treatment that is typically used nowadays, apivar in the strips, does not build up like the other ones used to. Now, we don't know all about how it works with the combs, but we do know it's not near as bad as the old ones that would just, just build up and get toxic in the combs. So if you're not using those, that should give you a lot longer life on your combs. Now, what are the variables here? Because now people are going to talk about, oh, there's Roundup being sprayed a mile away, or, or my neighbor grows corn, you know, he's a big farmer, he's got soybeans, all that kind of stuff. So, the variables that I want to think about are all these chemicals from the outside of the beehive, not the miticides. Those things right there, I'm not really worried about that much. Your bees aren't going to be working that very hard. And even though a little does come in, it's just like with our bodies. If you took our liver and you looked underneath the microscope or had a, a test run on it, I guarantee you, you'd find a lot of junk in there. And hey, I'm not a fan of that stuff. I'm, I, I love my organic garden. I want my kids to be healthy. I want to be healthy. I don't want that junk in my food. However, our bodies thankfully can handle it to a degree, and so can your bees. The wax, the beeswax in your hive, is definitely the liver of the colony. If you keep your bees healthy, they can withstand trace amounts of these things. 
So don't worry so much about that. And I'm not saying don't ever recycle your combs, but I'm going to get to the, when you should do that in my opinion here in a second. Now as far as making new combs every year, I think that's great. But let me tell you about the value of combs. When you are a beekeeper who's trying to make money off of your bees, or I'm not, I'm not even saying just you're doing it for profit, because I know a lot of you are doing it for hobbies, but shouldn't your hobby pay for itself? Wouldn't that be awesome? I know hobby beekeepers who are actually taking their families on vacations every year because they manage their bees appropriately and they save their combs. What I really recommend is you get to the point of sustainability. And what I mean by that is, in my opinion, a sustainable comb size for a business is at least four deep boxes of drawn comb. I can put the queen in the bottom box, have an excluder, and then I've got multiple boxes of drawn combs above. When that nectar comes in just a little bit thicker than water, they have the space to dehydrate that over a vast area because they have to bring it in quick because the flows are really hard and short here. Bring it in, dehydrate it down. Bring it in, dehydrate it down. And so you need a lot of room for that. And if you don't, it backfills the brood nest and then your bees go swarm crazy. It won't re completely retard swarming having this extra comb, but it makes a huge difference. A huge difference. Plus, your honey crop is going to be much bigger. But just because you have those combs already ready for that queen to put that nectar above, why don't you throw an extra box of foundations in there? We do this all the time. You can draw an extra box, maybe even two boxes, depending on the length of your flow and your season every year and that gets you new combs then we sell nucleus colonies and we sell a couple of our old combs in each nucleus colony every year so we are um, getting rid of combs out of our operation to a degree and if they get really old and nasty then you can take these things and uh, recycle them and melt them down and sell them as beeswax candles or use them to coat your plastic foundation having some nice combs now these right here one looks really nasty and one does not they're the same age. This one right over here has been used for honey production. It's not in the hive very long. When bees walk over combs, they secrete a sticky substance to cling onto things, and that causes combs to darken. But this is only in the hive during honey production time. That's why it's so light. This one right here has been walked on a lot. Plus, as the bees are raised as larvae and pupate and go through their metamorphosis, the uh, process leaves stains inside the comb. This doesn't damage the combs whatsoever and there's some researchers that are showing that bees overwinter better in older combs and that might be due to healthy microflora that's inside the wax. If I can find a link to that article I read, I think it was by the University of Maryland or something like that, I will see if I can find that and post that below. But there's a lot of conflicting data and the professionals use combs for a lot longer than a couple of years. They would not be doing it if it was killing their bees and costing them money and that's that's pretty much all you need to know right there if you ask me. But so, if you have any questions as far as comb usage, longevity, cycling them out, drawing more, or anything else, always feel free in any of our videos to leave comments below. I will try to get them as soon as I can. And this video is actually born off of several comments in the videos that I just wanted to answer through a video instead of typing a bunch of stuff out because there's a lot to cover. And I'm sure I missed a thing or two. But just remember, these things are gold. If I would have used all drawn combs on our package versus nuke challenge, they would be quite a bit bigger than they are now. And we wouldn't have to feed them near as much. So when you're making splits, your bees will grow faster, use less feed, they're more sustainable. These combs are so important. So just remember, just because it's online and they're trying to scare you with these scare taxes about the bees are gonna go extinct next year or that combs are, are getting toxic, always replace them every other year or something. It's the internet. Hey, and I'm on the internet. Don't always just take my word for the bank and depend your whole hobby on it. Always spread the information around that you can get. And also, uh, make sure that you know that the person you're listening to actually has a couple beehives and doesn't just buy bees every year and then just sell out and redo it. Because there's several on YouTube that do that. And I'm not going to name names, but they are pretty darn big. All right. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below.